Totem Park Residence houses over 2,000 first-year UBC students. It was named after an outdoor museum that from 1951 until the late 1970s displayed a selection of carvings representing styles of various First Nations across BC. In 1962, renowned carvers Bill Reed and Douglas Cranmer recreated a Haida village at Totem Park, which is now behind the Museum of Anthropology. The original six houses were named with the intention of honoring First Nations communities in BC. However, they were selected without consulting the communities that these names refer to. Many of these terms do not reflect the actual names used by the communities themselves. The newest houses, Ham Lasam and Kalahan, carry place names on Point Grey that are significant to the Musqueam people and are written to represent the unique sounds of their language, Hunk Aminam. Unlike the original six house names, the new names were selected by a collaborative community-based naming committee to represent local history of the Musqueam territory that UBC is located on. This film series features stories and sites that connect UBC to the communities represented at Totem Park Residence. Asiam, Siam, Nishiaya, Ayeslak, Gwanasqui, Eatin, Eatin at Kumasquiam, Clark, Tishioanist, Kayapalano, E. Kultimoto, Kushilok, Tuhinas, E. Miknetan, Kushwe, E. to E. to Salsamok at Kumasquiam, Sleekwins, E. Tala, Stair, Gwanasquianist, E. Hilok Tala, High Tepe, Wasiam, Nishiaya, E. Tala. Haida means people, and Haidas are spread out uh, along the coast a little ways. They're up in southeastern Alaska, on the Panhandle there, in Heidelberg, possibly other places, but towards the very southern end of Alaska. Into Haida Gwaii, which is a set of islands just off the coast of British Columbia. It's the most northwesterly point of British Columbia. There's two linguistic groups up there. There's a northern end and a southern end. Out at the Museum of Anthropology, they have a nice Haida village there, and Bill Reed and um, Douglas Cram there, I think, carved the poles and got the houses organized. And so they got the two styles of burial poles. They got the house frontal pole against the house, the Haida house. Then they got memorial poles there standing. And inside you got the interior house pole. So they really did cover the ground quite well with, uh, with uh, thoughts of how it was, especially for the Haida. I've been doing artwork seriously since 1979 and uh, making a, a living from it. And the Museum of Anthropology out there at UBC is uh, so it's always had a nice, wonderful collection. So it was a place for me to gravitate to. And um, uh, I actually first started working out there on the piece for uh, Bill Reed, the Raven and the First Men. Yeah, he, well, he's a perfectionist. My dad is pretty much a perfectionist, and he's especially concerned with the finishing of a piece. Mm -hmm. So the outside will be very smooth. That's what I mean by finishing. He did the finish on the Raven and the First Men, so to get an idea, that's like what he used to do for Bill Reed before he did his own work. Well, the pole is a copy of an original pole. They had, uh, in the totem shed, they had fragments, but the fragments are really wonderful. This slivers, you know, but it had nice, uh, p nice carving in it, you know, and they could tell it was a nice thing. And, um, so Bill McLennan asked me uh, one time, one day, if I was interested in doing a replica of it. Of course I was, you know, I was, got all excited and sure, I was working for Bill too, right? And then um, got involved in that and, and uh, they had supplied me with photographs of where it stood in our village in the old days. And so from that I could, from the fragments, I could scale it up figure out my sizes and all that from, from the fragments and the carving on that. I just matched it up and, 
figured out my distance. And so it was like a 30 foot pole. It wasn't a tall, tall pole. But we raised it by hand and we had packed it from there to the museum by hand. Everybody got together. I found out later that the Museum of Anthropology had a, hired a machine oh. to be on standby just in case we <laughs> couldn't do it. But they had it hidden behind the tree so you couldn't see it. And I didn't know this until when it was finished. <laughs> Some of my friends from school came for the pole raising. That was really cool to see. It was like thousands of people were all in the back of the museum. There's water at the back of the museum now, but there didn't used to be water there. So imagine all where the water was was filled with people, filled all the way up to around the museum, around the longhouses. And they really used like people power to get the pole up. And it was really amazing. It's a real nice uh, scene because uh, when I felt pressure from the city and, and the institutions and stuff, I'd go out there, wander out to the Haida site and uh, relax, because it, it was close to the same feeling as home, you know, like, has that feeling. So I, I could relax and feel comfortable there, because there wasn't that many people too. It was a real nice uh, place to hang out. I like bringing my friends on tours to the museum. And I've done that through, I brought through Jumpstart and then just also friends from Jumpstart and anybody else that's interested, I enjoy taking them through the museum and telling them maybe some possible hide to pieces or how I might be connected to them. <laughs>